testimony here from two folks about not living with God as if somehow we're going to please Him by our performance, but trust in Christ. Doug, Linda. <laughs> I wasn't saved until I was about 21 years old and at that time we were attending a denominational church and so that shaped how I saw God I learned at that church that in order to please God I needed to act and perform in very specific ways if I wanted God's acceptance I needed to do or not do certain things a few years into my Christian life, Doug and I met a man who taught us about the amazing grace of God and the freedom that comes with that grace. We left the denomination and started attending another church, and there I learned even more about the gospel and the freedom that it brings to life. But old habits do um, die hard. They're hard to break. The chains of bondage to a performance-based lifestyle were still very much a part of me. I still had times where I felt like I wasn't pleasing to the Lord and that I wasn't working hard enough for the kingdom. And then the first of this year, Pastor Tom had a class on the transforming power of the gospel by Jerry Bridges. At that same time, I read a book called Three Free Sins by Steve Brown. And what God had been trying to show me all those years, as Ryan said, finally clicked. It was never about me or my performance or even my lack of performance. It is and always has been about how God sees his son, Jesus Christ, in me. When God looks at me, he is always pleased because of what Christ did for me in my place on the cross, the gospel in the flesh, and the daily living out of that gospel in my life. But as I said, old habits do die hard, and one day something happened that made me realize I still have false thinking to rid myself of. While spending time with our grandchildren and trying to give a little bit of positive reinforcement for some good behavior, I said, God is so pleased with the way you are sharing your toys with your cousin. You just made God smile. My words hit me like a ton of bricks. I was setting my babies up to live a performance-based lifestyle that's so contrary to the word of the gospel. I am now trying to learn how to reinforce good behavior without doing that. Um, and the, um, let's see, in Ephesians 2, 9, it says, Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done so that none of us can boast. That has all new meaning to me now. It's not just about saving me from hell but it's also for living a life in Christ. I don't want my kiddos to grow up thinking that their behavior helped or hurt them in their salvation or their standing in Christ either. And I've also learned that you're never too old to grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Because although I am now, because I now understand the gospel is more than John 3.16, I'm still learning how to daily live out the transforming of the gospel. As Linda mentioned, we've been saved for some time now. My gosh, over three decades. We thought we were grace believers. In fact, as she mentioned, uh, our first teaching pastor, who did understand grace and introduced us to freedom in Christ and understanding that we cannot merit uh, or earn our salvation. We had that down. Okay, we've had that down for some time. We've understood that. So after God showing up the first time and bringing us into a saving faith in Jesus Christ, along, uh, like, like with Linda and her, uh, God showing up again, introducing her to the freedom of the gospel of grace, uh, God showed up again for me as the Lord used uh, the pastor to call out some men from our church family and begin to disciple us. And for the first time, through those men and through our pastor, I realized um, you don't work for salvation, but nor do you merit or work in serving the kingdom of Christ. It's all grace. 
Now, I fell into the same trap that many, or we did, that many grace believers fall into. And that is that we embrace the salvation aspect of for, um, the grace, but the serving, we oftentimes begin to perform. We begin to perform. But uh, Apostle Paul makes it very clear that we are his workmanship in Christ Jesus for good works that God beforehand prepared in that we should walk in them. And the walking in them is also by grace and faith. And so there's a real liberty in that now in serving. And we praise him for bringing us to that revelation through our church leadership. And, and we're no, we know that we're still learning and still uh, growing in grace and this grace all the way.